Hey everybody, I'm Mama Baird and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be making a quick and easy breakfast. My husband has an errand to run so he needs something fast and something meaty and I might have got it a bit distracted earlier with my coffee and the computer. So we need something fast. My plan is to utilize this Polish kibasa and we're gonna have this as our protein for our breakfast. And then I have one giant potato here that I'm going to stab a couple of times with a fork, zap it for about five minutes to get it soft, and then we're gonna fry this up with some onion and a bell pepper. And that's what I'm gonna call breakfast. So let's get over to the stove. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Carolina and I live in Montana. I do a lot of food bank hauls, pantry cooking, and canning and preserving on my channel. If that's the kind of content you're into, I hope you'd consider subscribing. We have crazy amounts of fun around here. All right, so let's get over to the stove and fry up this potato. All right, first thing I'm gonna do with this big potato is just take out my anger on it. Make sure you move your hand when you get that aggressive. Husband, are you watching? All right, so I'm going to go and zap this for about, let's do four minutes and then I'll check it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to need another potato. This might be enough. We'll see. So let me go throw this in Chef Mike. All right, so I'm going to use both of these kabasa links. I'm just going to slice them about a quarter inch. And then in my pan here, I have some bacon grease. So I'm going to cook them in that. You could also cut these into moons if you needed them a little smaller. Oh, one fell on the floor. Jack's going to love that. Jack's the dog, not a kid, by the way. I have my heat at about a five right now, so nothing too hot. We want to cook these kind of low and slow, so that gives us time to cut our peppers and our onions and let our, and let our potato cook. So I just have a small onion here. I usually keep some prepped up in the fridge, but I do not have any prepped at this moment. Would be a good opportunity to do that. And I'm just going to do a small dice on these. The kids don't like big pieces of peppers and onions, which I don't blame them. But this will add a lot of flavor to the potatoes and the kielbasa. Now these ends in the skins I saved for broth, so that's why you kind of see me putting them over here. Like give this a, give this a stir. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and crank the heat up a little bit to a seven. About a medium high. So we want a char on these, at least I do. Alright, got my onions in a bowl. Let's cut up this pepper. My daughter loves eating raw bell peppers, especially the red ones, so I always try and get a new variety for her to try. I might cut these a little bigger than the onions, but still not, not super big, like not as big as the sausages. Yeah, starting to get some. Color. You can see some of the fats cooking away in the inside of it, but we're still going to let that cook more. All right, we got all of our veggies cut. I'm going to give this one more stir, and then I'm going to go check on my potato. See how it's feeling. I put it in there for four minutes. 
Let's go see how she's looking. All right, the potato was not done. I gave it four more minutes. I also put a little bit of water in that bottom of that bowl that I, I put it in a bowl to heat it up. So that way it kind of helps steam it. And then I'm gonna call these done. Take these off and then we're gonna cook our peppers and onions a little bit. I got quite a layer on the bottom of this pan. Oh, sorry. Keep bumping you. Get out of the way. Okay. Peppers and onions. And then I also have some garlic. This is what I made before, that garlic and olive oil. This is a big container. I did have a smaller one. And this is just the oil that's solidified being in the fridge. So I'm going to add like four or five cloves to this of that. Another way I reuse extra jars is to reuse them for products. I'm just going to kind of smash this garlic. It was cooked in that olive oil, so you can see it kind of just smashes up. And this will help flavor the oil and cook the peppers. So then when we put our potatoes in here, the potatoes will have a nice flavor. I'm using the fork to kind of scrape the bottom of the pan, get some of those crusties up. Get back in there. I'm gonna put a little bit of kosher salt in there to help draw out some of the moisture from those veggies. And then we'll leave that out because we're gonna need to season our potato. All right, I'm gonna go run and check on the potato real quick. My microwave's in my laundry room because I really don't use it that much. So I gotta go in there, but I don't mind. All right, our potato is done. And here's that bag I was talking about that has all my veggie scraps in it. So I put my bell pepper tops and seeds and everything in there too to help add flavor. And then this just stays in my freezer for whenever I make stocks. All right, so I ended up doing this for eight minutes. It's pretty soft now. I'm gonna cut off this one bad spot here. Cause that's my chickens. Okay, and you could peel this if you don't like the skin, but I like the skin on potatoes. And that's where a lot of the potassium is as well, is in the potato skin. Cause potatoes actually have more potassium than bananas, if you believe it. So I'm just gonna be cubing these. That's a little hard because that was on the bottom and got overcooked. So I'm going to give that to the chickens. And then I'm going to put this straight in the pan. Dang it. Got the potato. Okay. So we're gonna let these cook. I probably could have done another potato, but that's okay. No big deal. Hopefully they'll still get crispy, even though I didn't take the peppers and onions out, but I think it'll be fine. I am gonna crank up my heat though to like an eight to try and get a good sear on those potatoes. I'm gonna add some more salt because potatoes love salt and I have not salted them yet. I'm gonna add a little bit of smoked paprika because that adds really good color to potatoes and not much spice. So paprika is a girl's best friend. And then I have this Sitara seasoning blend I'm trying to use up that's kind of like an Italian seasoning, so I'm gonna sprinkle some of that on there. So I'm just trying to make sure I'm clearing the bottom of my pan so those potatoes have surface area to get a good caramelization. All right, let's give this another flip. It's been going for a couple of minutes. I might not get a super good sear on these. I probably should have taken the peppers and onions out. But that's okay, and that's what learning to cook is all about, guys.
and learning mistakes, redoing it, happens to the best of us. I'm gonna deglaze this with some Worcester sauce. Or Worcestershire sauce, or Shire sauce. You know what I'm saying, that sauce. It also adds a nice like, caramelize caramelization to the potatoes. Now I am kind of rushing this, guys, just because we're ready to go. <laughs> I probably could have used canned potatoes. That would have been good. Okay. Like the potato got cooked in the microwave, so we were really just adding flavor and color to it. I am going to give one of them a taste, though. Oh, yeah. Toast bug. try it looks pretty good i know my potatoes didn't get too crispy i know i'm gonna hear about it from husband that they're not crispy what's your guys's tricks to getting uh some crispy potatoes i feel like that's one thing i struggle with is getting good fried crispy potatoes like i don't know exactly what i'm doing wrong like last time i did it i felt like it was really good maybe it's because i pre-cooked the bacon in there so was, the pan was already too dirty I don't know, but this still looks really good and also really hot. I'm gonna try and get a pepper in here. The potatoes are falling apart though, so the microwave help. Mmm. I love Polish kielbasa, it's so good. This is one of the meals my mom used to make growing up, but she didn't put the peppers in it, she would just put onions. And she was always really good again, her fried potatoes. So I need to get her in the kitchen and have her show me. But seriously, guys, leave any comments below on your tips and tricks to frying up potatoes. This is a super quick and easy breakfast, though. That only took about 20 minutes because I zapped that potato in the microwave. So that was a nice little hack. Do you guys make anything similar? Please let me know. I forgot I was going to open up one of my chocolate milks that I canned. This is the first time I'm going to open this up. I canned this back in May. If you would like to learn how to can your own milk, I can link that video below. Let me pop this open though and we'll see how it tastes. Do any of you guys can your own milk? With the regular milk, I noticed that it does have a bit of an evaporated taste. So I'm curious to see how the chocolate milk. Now this was just straight chocolate milk from the jug. I did not mix this with a powder or anything. All right, give it a try. Mmm, mm, we got a mmm. Good. Good. So apparently it doesn't have a taste with, for them. With sparkles in it. Yeah. So let me give it a try. Tastes like chocolate milk. It does taste a bit more condensed, I guess, like evaporated milk does, but it's chocolate milk. And this was straight out of the jug, and this has been on my shelf for... Mm -hmm. How long ago was May? Six months? What? May? The May, May? The month May. How long ago was that? Seven months? Seven months. <laughs> we haven't had coffee yet. So this has been on my shelf for seven months now and it tastes fantastic. Yes. So if you guys have heard about canning your own milk and you've been apprehensive about it, it has worked great for me. I have used canned milk that's been on my shelf for up to a year. So check that out below if you're curious. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time on Mama Bairds. Mm -hmm.